Hey, what's up everyone? David here. I'm excited because man, I've been thinking about making this video for a really long time now and I've also been gathering my thoughts and ideas for it for a long time. I made a video a little bit over a year ago discussing the sales potentials of Shin Megami Tensei 5. Now of course a lot has changed since then and I have a ton more to say in terms of sales and what we should expect and also my predictions for the game. I guess this is my HD remaster of this video that I made a year ago so today I'll be going over everything surrounding Shin Megami Tensei 5 and its sales potential. So I'm going to list a couple of factors that I think will have an impact on the sale of Shin Megami Tensei 5 that we already know and it can be everything so it can be little things like social media campaigns it can be previous game sales it can be competitors game sales so we're gonna look at a lot of things that will give us a good idea and at the end I'll be able to give you my official sales prediction so my numbers for the game of course if you want to stay up to date on any type of news in terms of Shin Megami Tensei Persona Atlas stuff you're at the right place make sure to subscribe ring the notification bell if you like the video please give me a thumbs up it helps a ton you guys have no idea and most importantly let me know what number do you expect SMT5 to sell is it gonna sell a million is it gonna sell 5 million is gonna sell 300,000 copies let me know what you think so we can have a very good and constructive discussion in the comment sections but now let me list everything that we should look at for the sales now the first thing that I want to mention is of course Atlas Japan fantastic marketing campaign so they're doing a fantastic job marketing SMT5 there is demon reveals every single day for their game it is a one minute video that they're dropping on their youtube channel showcasing a demon for the game we can see returning demons which are still exciting because we get to see new animations we get to see them in hd and it's very entertaining and we also get to see new demons it keeps the game in the news we're seeing new content from Shin Megami Tensei 5 every single day and they started after e3 so that's very hype i'm reacting to all the demon reveals make sure to check it out i'll link the playlist to my demon reveals reactions it's just exciting it keeps the game in the mind of everyone and it's a very good thing they're also uploading trailers kind of frequently as well story trailers which is really cool there we got to get a better look at the characters uh, what to expect in terms of story the music all of that good stuff and those trailers very fun to react to once again it keeps the game in the news good job there and they also recently dropped a new segment very entertaining to watch it was around eight minutes basically they were uh, premiering a video on their youtube channel and it was basically just like if you were watching the news on tv but it was smt5 news and they were going over various different things plus they mentioned that more news episodes like this are to come which is very exciting i'm going to be reacting to that but once again keeps the game in the news so good job atlas japan on that hand the second thing that I want to mention here is, of course, Nintendo's big push for the game. Nintendo easily has the least powerful system this generation, and a lot of people are complaining about the lack of quality new third-party games on the console. In terms of third-party exclusive, though, you cannot deny that Nintendo takes care of them, and they like to push them as much as possible, and it certainly is the case for Shin Megami Tensei 5. Let's go over what Nintendo did to push Shin Megami Tensei 5 and to help it and to help the marketing of the game. Shin Megami Tensei 5 was first revealed and shown at the console reveal event in January 2017. That's right, when they first showed the Nintendo Switch to the world, it was in January 2017, they were showing the console, what it was gonna do, its features, and most importantly, its upcoming games. And this is where the next mainline entry in the Shin Megami Tensei series was officially revealed. That's a very big place to show the game, and it shows how confident Nintendo is in the project and how confident they were early on. They basically dropped a Shin Megami Tensei Nintendo Direct in July 2020. That's right, they first started their Nintendo Direct mini partner showcases last year in July of 2020, and the first one, for most people, was shit. But for us, Megaton fan, it was fire, because all the reveals that were in the um, Direct were pretty ass, except for SMT reveals. They started with Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remastered, we all freaked out, it was super dope, and then SMT 5, after 3 years of silence, new trailer, we were blown away, of course most Nintendo fans were angry because as I mentioned, it was pretty much an SMT Direct, but still, it shows that, hey, we're ready to put this new format of Direct out, 
and the big game out of that direct is going to be SMT. Once again, good job on Nintendo's hand there for the marketing of the game because millions of people were watching that partner showcase in July of last year. Now, in June of this year, there was E3 2021. E3 was back after a year off due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and SMT5 was at the show. It was at the show, we were fully expecting it. Gameplay reveal, music, character reveal, all that good stuff, it was fantastic. And hell, Nintendo even put the game in the three house. So if you don't know, Nintendo, the way that they proceed for their E3 most of the time is they give us a Direct. That's where we got the SMT5 trailer. And then after the Direct, they do three house live, which is hours of Nintendo employees playing the upcoming games that are going to release on a Nintendo Switch later down the line. And SMT5 had a segment, which is freaking amazing so i had to watch the whole three house live because i was waiting for that but once again it just shows how much they care about the game oh and i also need to mention this i know it's a small thing but social media campaigns nintendo has been promoting smt5 through their social medias they've been putting out videos i know there was one clip where they were talking about nahobino's hair which is glorious it's just small little things like that that put a ton of eyes on the game and it's awesome at the moment as well, Nintendo has an exclusive, a third-party exclusive releasing this month being No More Heroes 3. If you go on Nintendo's social media pages, you're going to see No More Heroes 3 has their banner on Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And they're always doing that for all their third-party exclusive, their big ones at least. And I fully expect them to do the same thing for SMT5, which once again is a small thing, but it puts so many eyes on the game which is a very good thing. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about here is a surprising one, one that's going to surprise some of y'all. Atlas West's decent marketing campaign. Now, we tend to complain a lot in terms of what Atlas West is doing to promote upcoming games, but I gotta admit that they're doing a decent job for SMT5. We have translated trailers, such as the story trailer, which they dropped the premiere at the same time as Atlas Japan, very cool thing there, the trailer was fully translated, which is great. We don't have the dub yet, but it was at least translated, which is a very good first step. They're also doing tons of retweets on Twitter with SMT5 art, which again, I keep saying that, small things that are helping the game in the long run, good stuff there. And there's also Doi's demon commentary. I know Atlas Japan is also doing this, but Masayuki Doi is the artist for demons in Shin Megami Tensei 5. He's doing the design for all the characters. And they tend to put on social medias every now and then just a commentary of Doi explaining how he came up with a certain design. A, again, a very simple thing that is very exciting to read for older fans, and it keeps the game in the news for newer fans that are not necessarily as excited uh, in the lore as we are, but it keeps the game in the news, in the, in the minds of fans all around, which is a very good thing. Now, the fourth thing that I want to talk about is the release timing, the global launch of Shin Megami Tensei 5. SMT5 releases globally on November 12th, 2021. November is a packed month for gaming in general, but in terms of RPGs and in terms of Nintendo Switch games, there isn't much. Sure, there is the Generation 4 Pokemon remakes, but those games appeal to a completely different audience, and for various reasons, I really don't think it will be a nuisance to SMT5 sales. I suggest checking out my bro Katana Riku's video on the subject if you want to hear more on my thoughts, because he basically summarized everything that I think in terms of why Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes won't be a nuisance to Shin Megami Tensei 5. Link down in the description below if you're interested in checking out his video there. Now, there's not just the Switch on the market, there's also other system. And in terms of other system, I gotta say, there's zero competition in November. And just the holidays in general isn't too hot in terms of games and also in terms of JRPGs on the PlayStation, the PC, and the Xbox. The biggest Japanese RPG competitor for the holiday season easily is Tales of Arise. But Tales of Arise is releasing at the beginning of September. So I think it's fair to assume that it won't have any negative effect on SMT5 sales potential since it's, it releases way too early. So, not a problem there. Oh, and also, we definitely want to mention, it is one of Atlas' first global launch, so cool there. Um, possibly thanks to Nintendo, 
or Sega, because we know they're doing this with other games such as Lost Judgment in September. So good stuff. Hopefully to keep rolling with global launches in the future. The fifth point that I want to mention, and possibly one of the most important one, is the massive spike in newer Megaton fans in the last few years. Persona 5, whether you like it or not, is Atlas' biggest game to date. It was extremely successful and was able to reach a mainstream audience that JRPGs don't normally attract. On top of that, Persona 5's protagonist, Joker, joined a ton of games, including one of the most popular fighting games of all time, Super Smash Bros. A lot of those new fans are aware that Persona is a Shin Megami Tensei spin-off and are possibly looking forward to Shin Megami Tensei 5 releasing in November. Obviously, not all of them. But I think it's fair to assume that a certain portion of the fans that jumped into Megaton with P5 and Smash Bros are going to jump the mainline SMT hype train in November. Speaking of mainline SMT, as a Megaton content creator, I cannot deny that Nocturne HD, despite its more or less average quality, did bring up a lot of JRPG fans and Persona fans into mainline SMT for the first time. A ton of new fans arrived since SMT3 is now very accessible with its HD remaster on PS4, PC and the Nintendo Switch. I've read a ton of comments on my videos of people telling me that they first tried SMT with Nocturne HD, they liked it, and they're looking forward to 5 in November. The final thing that I wanted to bring up very quickly here, because it's a simple one, but us, Shin Megami Tensei vets, we're hungry. We really are. <laughs> SMT5 has been revealed over 4 years ago now, and the latest new mainline game released over 5 years ago. We are hungry and ready for more. SMT5 is looking like the next best thing. The first new HD SMT game. SMT5 is looking like the next best thing. The first new HD SMT game? Unreal Engine 4? One of the best looking Switch games? Ryota Kazuka on the soundtrack? New gameplay mechanics? A sexy protagonist? We're here for it. We're, we're ready for it. It's been so long. We're here for it. Now before I give my sales predictions, I want us to look at game sales numbers. Game sales that will give us a better idea of what to expect for SMT5. Now let's start up with Megaton sales in general. The best selling mainline SMT game is Shin Megami Tensei 4. SMT4 is a Nintendo 3DS exclusive that released early in the Nintendo 3DS's lifespan, which means that there was not a large install base when it released, and it still managed to sell more or less 900,000 copies units worldwide once it was all said and done. Very good there considering how early the game launched. The best selling Megaton game in general is of course Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal. Those games are obviously PlayStation 4 exclusive for now. There's two releases, P5 and Royal, and both of those games combined sold more than 4 million copies worldwide, which is crazy numbers there. Very good to see. The second thing that I want us to look at is just exclusive RPG sales on the Nintendo Switch in general. The first one is a third party exclusive Octopath Traveler. It was exclusive at the time. I know it released on, I think, Stadia and Game Pass, but I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But before it released on other platforms, it managed to sell roughly 2 million copies worldwide, which is very good for a 2D HD type of game here on the Nintendo Switch. Now, the next two games that I'm about to mention are first party titles, which definitely have a tendency to sell more copies, but I still think it's a fair thing for us to look at. The first one being Fire Emblem Three Houses, the game sold 3 million copies exclusive on Switch, and the next one is Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which managed to sell 2 million copies on the Nintendo Switch. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is the first HD mainline SMT game. It's releasing exclusively on the Switch with a 90 million user install base at this point. It's probably going to be at around 100 million user once SMT5 releases 3 months from now. The software attach rate is extremely high as well, with a 7 games per user average as of August 2021. What that means is that out of, out of those 90 million people who own a Nintendo Switch, the average number of games that those owners purchased is roughly 7 games, which is extremely high of an attach rate. So for all those reasons and all those things that we look at, SMT5, in my opinion, will become in its first year the best-selling mainline SMT game. I think that's a given. I don't think it will outsell Persona 5, but I don't think it's impossible either once it's all said and done. I think Shin Megami Tensei 5 will be sitting at 
roughly 2 million copies sold worldwide once everything's done. So once we're moving on from the Switch in a couple of years, I think 2 million is a fair number due to all the little things that I've listed, the great marketing campaigns, the newer fans, similar games and how much they sold on the Switch. 2 million is a good number and is my number for my official predictions of SMT5 sales. But now I want to hear what you guys think. Drop a comment and give me the number. What do you expect SMT5 will sell when it's, it's all said and done? And most importantly, please justify yourself. If you say it's going to sell 4 million, let me know why. If you think it's going to sell 500k, let me know why because I want us to have a good discussion. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Once again, make sure to check my dude Katana Riku's video in the description below if you want to hear more about Pokemon Gen 4 versus SMT5 because it's a very good video there. And as always, if you're new, subscribe, ring the notification bell, like the video, all that good stuff. Thank you all. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.